Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Namaskrityam Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narotamam Naram Chaiva Narotamam Daivim Sarasatim Vyasam Daivim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudiraya Tato Jaya Mudiraya Nesta Prayeshu Vabhadreshu Nesta Prayeshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 13, entitled Dhritarashtra Quits Home, Text Number 10. Bhavad Veda Bhagavatas Tirta Bhuta Swayam Vipo Tirti Kurvanti Tirtani Swanta Stena Gadabrata Bhavad Veda Bhagavatas Tirta Bhuta Swayam Vipo Tirti Kurvanti Tirtani Swanta Stena Gadabrata Ayo. No, no. No, no. 
Sachi Sundar in Nimana. Nikai Nima. Tanila. Tanila. Okay, Babat. Your good self. Vida. Vida. Like. Like. Bhagavata, Bhagavata, devotees, devotees. Tirta, Tirta, the holy places of pilgrimage, holy places of pilgrimage. Buddha, Buddha, converted into, converted into. Swayam, Swayam, personally, personally. Vibo, Vibo, O powerful one, o powerful one. Tirti Kurvanti, make into a holy place of pilgrimage. Tirtani, the holy places, Swa Antastena, having been situated in the heart, Gadabrita, the personality of God. Translation. My Lord, devotees like your good self are verily holy places personified. Because you carry the personality of Godhead within your heart, you turn all places into places of pilgrimage. 你把所有的地方都变成了圣地。Purport by Srila Prabhupada The personality of Godhead is omnipresent by His diverse potencies everywhere. Just as the power of electricity is distributed everywhere within space. Similarly, the Lord's omnipresence is perceived and manifested by his unalloyed devotees like Vidur, such as electricity is manifested in an electric bulb. A pure devotee like Vidura always feels the presence of the Lord everywhere. He sees everything in the potency of the Lord and the Lord in everything. The holy places all over the earth are meant for purifying the polluted consciousness of the human being by an atmosphere surcharged with the presence of the Lord's unalloyed devotees. If anyone visits a holy place, he must search out the pure devotees residing in such holy places, take lessons from them, try to apply such instructions in practical life, and thus gradually prepare oneself for the ultimate salvation going back to Godhead. To go to some holy place of pilgrimage does not mean only to take a bath in the Ganges or Yamuna or to visit the temple situated in those places. One should also find representatives of Vidura who have no desire in life save and accept to serve the Personality of Godhead. The Personality of Godhead is always with such pure devotees because of their honorized service, which is without any tinge of fruitive action or utopian speculation. They are in the actual service of the Lord, specifically by the process of hearing and Mahamuni Vyasadeva heard from Narada and then he chanted in writing. Sukadeva Goswami studied from his father and he described it to Parikshit. That is the way of Srimad Bhagavatam. So by their actions, the pure devotees of the Lord can render any place into a place of pilgrimage. And the holy places are worth the name only on their account. Such pure devotees are able to rectify the polluted atmosphere of any place. And what to speak of a holy place rendered unholy by the questionable actions of interested persons who try to adopt a professional life at the cost of the reputation of a holy place. Om Magyanatra
If you study Bhakti Vai Bhav, if you take the Bhakti Vai Bhav course, this is one of the slokas which has to be memorized. So Vidura is being spoken about by Maharaj Yudhisthira. Maharaj Yudhisthira is describing Vidura as a the personification of the holy place. Because Maharaj Yudhisthira understands correctly that it's a person, it's a devotee which makes the place holy. Just like we go to a place, oh, this is a holy place. Why is it a holy place? Because very great, saintly, holy persons have resided there. So there's Tirta. It's mentioned Tirta Kurvanti Tirtani. Tirta means the holy place, a place where devotees or where some particular pastime took place. And there is also a dam. A dam is a little different from a Tirta. Just like Mayapur Dam and Vrindavan Dam. Because a dam means a place where the Lord resides eternally. Lord Chaitanya eternally is eternally residing there in Navadvip Dam. And Lord Krishna is there in Vrindavan Dam. Of course, they're not manifest, they're called aprakat. <coughs> but when they were manifest, that's their prakat lila. <coughs> but we're hearing today about tirthas. Vidura is the devotee of the Lord, 
And wherever he goes, he carries the Lord in his heart. And he sees also the Lord everywhere. He is a great devotee. And the great devotees see the Lord everywhere, in everyone, in everything. Just like for the pure devotee, there is no material world. They see this world also as a spiritual world. Because they're seeing everything in relation to Krishna. So the pure devotees, the, uh, Prabhupada points out to us that uh, when you go to a holy place, we shouldn't go there just simply to take a bath. Sometimes people, of course, have that purpose. They come to Vrindavan, they want to go to bathe in the Yamuna. To, they know that by bathing in the holy water, they're going to deposit their bad, their sinful activity. So, long ago, Mother Ganges was not flowing here on this planet. It was only in the higher planet. And then Maharaj Bhagirat, a great king, he performed great austerities and he got Mother Ganga to come to this planet. But Mother Ganges was she didn't want to come here. Because she said, if I come, all the sinful people will come and take bath in my water. Would you like people to come and give you all their karma? Are you willing to take karma for everyone? Just like Vasudev Datta, great devotee of Lord Chaitanya, he told Lord Chaitanya, let everyone go back to Godhead and I will stay here and suffer for them. Right. So, would you like to do that? We, we don't usually want to do that. So, Lord Chaitanya appreciated Vasudev Dhaka very much. He said, This is very nice. Mother Ganga, she, would, she didn't want to come. She said, if I come, all these sinful people will come. I will have to take all their sins. And Prabhupada talks how it's very important for devotees to follow strictly the regulated principle. Because if they don't follow the regulated principles, then the spiritual master also has to take some of their karma. Just like Srila Prabhupada, when he was very sick, very ill, he said, my illness is because I accepted too many unqualified disciples. And when people are not qualified for initiation, they don't follow the principles. And then the spiritual master has to take karma for them. Of course, the person also takes karma. But the spiritual master also has to take some of that karma. 
So Mother Ganga, she didn't want to come. But Maharaj Bhagirat told her, if you come, all the pure devotees, all the great devotees will also bathe in your water. And when they bathe in your water, they will take away all the bad, all the bad karma which the sinful people put in. So Mother Ganga thought, oh, okay, that sounds good, I will come. <laughs> because she wanted that all these great devotees will bathe in her water. And of course, Lord Chaitanya personally would take bath in the Ganga every day. Up until he was 24, Lord Chaitanya was living in Navadweep, so he could take bath in the Ganga every day. So Mother Ganga was enjoying the association of Lord Chaitanya and all these other devotees. The holy places are not meant for just taking a bath. Taking a bath, that's also good, you do that, yes, you go and bathe in the water, we should do it. But there's much more important things to be done in a holy place. And that is to find out the devotees, the pure devotees who are living there. And to hear from them. And to associate with them. To, to serve them. And to chant with them. And the association of the pure devotees is very found, very powerful. It is said even one moment's association with a devotee can give one perfection. So we go to the holy places. We don't just go to the holy places to go shopping. And people come back from the holy place and they just have big bagfuls of things they bought shopping. And ask them, did, what is your realization about going to the holy place? And they'll say, well, I, I went shopping and I took a bath. And we went to many temples and we saw the deities. But what did you hear? What did you learn? That's the important purpose in going to holy place. That we have to hear properly, we have to get more knowledge and understanding. We want realization. Right? Not only just knowledge, but knowledge becomes mature when it's when we realize that knowledge. Of course, we also get more faith by visiting the Holy Place. We, get, we hope all of the devotees who come to the Holy who visit the Holy Places. They will have more faith after visiting the Holy But you get the greatest faith by hearing from the pure devotees.
Of course, we have to learn who to associate with when we come to a holy place. Because it's not that everybody in the holy place is a pure devotee. Prabhupada describes here in the purport that some people, they take advantage of the holy place as a, to make money just as a business. That they know many people are coming and they think of ways how to get the money. And they get the money for their sense gratification. So that does not help our devotion. If we associate with such people, then it's very bad association. And then there are also people who may be impersonal. They may have be speaking Mayavadi philosophy. But that's very bad association. Lord Chaitanya would run and throw himself in the Ganges just to purify himself. Mahatman Mahatman must no, wait, what's the verse I'm thinking of? Mahatsevam Dwaram Mahurva Muktes. By serving the Mahatmas, the devotees, then it opens the doors to liberation. But Tamo Dwaram Yoshitam Sangi Sangam. When we associate with materialistic people, then it opens the doors to hell. Takes us into the mode of ignorance. We were seeing yesterday when we were in the downtown in Tamil, we saw that the Bhairava, who the local Nepali people are worshipping. And people are offering alcohol to them. Right? Is it true? So this is this is their religion, but it's influenced by the mode of ignorance. Just like there are Puranas, there are Puranas for people in goodness, there are Puranas for people in passion, and Puranas for people in There's different instructions for people in different modes of nature. So these people who are worshipping in the mode of ignorance, that's better than not worshipping at all. At least they have faith in some procedure, some religious practice. But we have to understand there are different levels of religious practice. So Srila Prabhupada brought us the highest thing. Actually, one of, one of Prabhupada's godbrothers, I was speaking before about uh, Prabhupada's godbrother, Bon Maharaj. So he said one time, he said that our Prabhupada, he had brought the highest thing to the lowest level. Because he gave Krishna, he gave the opportunity of Krishna consciousness to everyone. Hmm. 
is actually Krishna consciousness is the highest thing, the highest principles of religion. What, what is the, the rules and regulations, the requirements to practice bhakti yoga are very high, very special. And for ordinary people, they would just say, no, impossible. But Prabhupada said impossible is a word in the fool's dictionary. Prabhupada understood that if people are given proper education and training, then they can also come to the level of practicing Krishna consciousness. They need that training, they have to be trained and educated. Sanatana Goswami used, takes the verse from the Shastras which said, just like bell metal can be made into gold by a chemical process. In the same way, anybody who is properly initiated and trained, they can become a Brahman. But it requires not only the initiation, also training. Sometimes we get people come along, they take initiation, and then they, you never see them again. Probably here also like that. Maybe here in Kathmandu. Hmm? And they'll say, I'm initiated. But they never come to be trained. They don't take part in the programs. They don't hear. So that then they don't get much benefit. And the same way, many people go to holy places. Many people come and visit the holy places. We see so many buses, busloads of people, they come to Mayapur. They all come there and they come and they will see the deities, they will go around Mayapur. And even we have tour buses coming here. The tourists are coming and visiting here. So this is also a Tirtha. This is a place of devotion where people are practicing principles of Krishna consciousness. There are no sinful activities going on here. Nobody is smoking cigarettes, nobody is cooking meat. Not even drinking tea or coffee. And every day people are chanting the holy name. And people are worship we're worshiping the deities. So this is a Tirtha, this is also a holy place. And who made it holy? The devotees who are here. Right? So the devotees, they, wherever they go, they make material thing into a spiritual. Thing. Just like they have these devotees have these mobile phones, it's a material thing. But they're using it in the service of Krishna. They've got their many phones, they've got their Bhagavad Gita inside the mobile phone. And they've got recordings of different devotees speaking and chanting. <laughs> 
and pictures of the deities. So they made their mobile phone spiritual. So devotees know how to turn matter into spirit. They just connect it to Krishna. In the same way, wherever they make a place into a holy place. So Maharaj Yudhisthira has given a very nice glorification of Vidura. Not only Vidura, he is glorifying all the devotees. Because he says, wherever the devotee, if one is really devotee, where, wherever they go, they will make it a holy place. Prabhupada said, just like if you have... You, you have the, this machine which they use to, to take the, the husks off of rice. So that machine, wherever you, if you have it in China, or you bring it to Nepal, or you take it to America, it can only do the same thing. In the same way, wherever the devotee goes, his business is the same. They chant, they read the books about Krishna, they cook prasadam for Krishna, and they're, they're just doing engaging in their devotional activities. Wherever, it does not matter if they're in China, or if they're in Nepal, or if they go to America, wherever they go, they just do the same thing. They wake up in the morning, they go to Mongol RT. Right? They chant and dance. Try to distribute some books. And tell wherever they go, tell people about Krishna. So this is the devotee, this is the, the real devotee. Of course, we have to be a little careful in China. We don't just tell anyone and everyone about Krishna. We have to be a little careful. So, use our intelligence. We don't want to reveal ourselves to everyone. If you show that you're, that you're practicing some spiritual thing, then some other people may be very envious. And they make, make, make trouble for you. So we have to often disguise ourselves. Just like when I go to China, I don't come in a devotee dress. I remember when I took sannyas, Tamal Krishna Goswami said, don't, don't shave your head. He said, usually when, you know, Lord Chaitanya took sannyas, he shaved his head. But he told me, he said, don't, don't you shave your head. He said, because after you take sannyas, you're going straight to China. So he said, you don't, you don't want to have a shaved head. So, like that, we disguise ourselves. But we have to keep Krishna in our heart. 
，常才什么？把 Krishna 留在自己的心中。So not only in our heart, we want to also when when we get the opportunity to be with devotees, then we want to be very eager for that opportunity. 当然不只是藏在心中。如果有机会展示的话，我们也特别渴望的利用这个机会。Just like some people say, oh, I'm always thinking of Krishna. 就像有人说啊，我我老想着 Krishna。And then you say, well, why why don't you come to the temple? Why don't you come and be with us and associate? No, I'm too busy. 好了，他说啊，你老想 Krishna， 那你为什么你不来庙啊？你为什么不跟我在一起啊？他回答说：“我老忙了，没时间。” I have my business。我有生意做。I have to watch my television。我得看电视，没时间跟你在一起。I have to do so many other things。我我我有很多事要做。So although they have the opportunity to associate, they don't take it。有那么多机会和朋友联谊，你就不来。So here in Kathmandu, the devotees are very fortunate. You have freedom. You you're not restricted. 当然，在加德满都，奉献者很幸运了。呃，没呃没有限制，自由自由自在的。Yes, you can go everywhere chanting, and you can be a devotee. 你们可以到哪到到这里，到处都可以走，和奉献者联系。You can shave your heads. You can have nice sika. You can put tea leg. 在这里可以把头剃得光光的。刘西卡、有提拉克，啥都可以干。Let everyone see devotee。啊，让别人看你是一个奉献者。Okay, any questions？ 有问题吗？ Okay. I have a question。Okay。如果歌唱的好，就是伟大奉献者吗？如果一个伟大奉献者，他能声称自己是伟伟大奉献者吗？伟大奉献者他如何声称自己 ？I translate. <laughs> okay. The great, uh, who is the great devotee? Who one who what was the I expert to sing the Vaishnava song? He is a pure devotee. And, uh, uh what's the pure devotee side? If he is real great devotee. What should he say? If he is really a great devotee, what should he say? Well, he should speak about Krishna. 一个一个伟大的奉献者，他总谈论 Krishna. And if he is a great devotee, does it mean he has to be also a great singer? 呃、uh, ，一个伟大的奉献者不意味着他是一个伟大的歌歌星。He may be a good singer. He may not. 他可能是个歌星，也可能不不不是。Sometimes, you know, we become attached to hearing the sound. The sound we think a nice sound. 他可能会依附他唱的那个美妙的声音，哎呀，老好听。But we should understand the name of Krishna is transcendental. 但我们要理解，昆山的名字是超然的。When Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati was leaving the body. He asked the devotee to sing for him. 呃，当巴蒂斯坦达·萨尔斯塔布离开身体的之前，他让一个奉献者为自己唱。But he asked the devotee who was not a good singer to sing because he knew actually this person is a very advanced devotee. 但是他让一个不是歌星的奉献者唱，因为他知道这个人是一个非常进步的奉献者。He didn't mind that he could not sing very nicely. 他不介意他唱的那个懂跑调五音不全，他并不介意。But he knew that he was hearing from a, a good devotee. 但他知道这个人是伟大的奉献者。So the qualification to sing for Krishna is not material. 这个成为昆山伟大奉献者的资格不是物质的。But material, if, it, if it's a material, if it sounds nice, then it's also it's attractive to people. 当然，你这个物质的唱诵声音很好的话，会吸引人来。Just like when Prabhupada sent the devotees from America to go to London to open to begin Krishna consciousness in London. 就像帕帕德派他的美国的门徒去英国去拓拓展昆山的知觉。So the devotees who went. They were all very good musicians. 在这些人去的时候，他们都是精湛的音乐家
They were and they had practiced together singing and doing kirtan. And when they went to London, they got the opportunity to meet famous musicians. And that's how they made the record, like the Govinda record, which we play every morning. So if you're good in music and you use it for Krishna, very good. But we should never be proud and think I'm a good singer. We should be humble and think that I'm not a very good singer, I'm just trying to be devotee. Humility is very important quality of a devotee. Usually we will not like to claim to be a great devotee. But we think, I want to become a better devotee. But I'm not very qualified. But please bless me that I can be a better devotee. So the qualification for Krishna consciousness is, is not material. Devotion is a transcendental quality. And the more we have devotion, then our pure love for Krishna will manifest. Okay, any other question? Yes, Prabhu? A pure devotee, uh, by the consciousness, the matter is as spiritual or it totally converts the matter into spiritual. A pure, how does a pure devotee convert matter into spirit? No, no. A pure devotee, by the consciousness, he uses a matter as a spiritual or uh, it totally converts the matter into spiritual. Uh, is it, does the pure devotee convert matter into spirit by his consciousness? Definitely his consciousness has to be proper. He has to be Krishna conscious. So he, wants, he sees some object which may be material, but he sees it as Krishna's energy. He knows everything belongs to Krishna. And he thinks how to use it for Krishna. So that is his consciousness manifesting in his actions. Yeah, if the consciousness is not correct, we won't think about using how to use something for Krishna. We'll only think to use something for our sense gratification. So the consciousness is the first thing. When we have Krishna consciousness, then we will act properly. We'll use our mind and senses and words all in the service of so consciousness, that's why we are, this is a society for Krishna consciousness. And when we are all Krishna conscious, then we will use everything properly. Just like this temple. We're using it for Krishna. The cows are here. We're using them for serving Krishna. We have Govindas. We have a restaurant. It's all for preaching about Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj, for 
wonderful lectures for your mobile consciousness. <coughs> uh, my question is like, sometimes devotees feel like reading Srila Prabhupada, after reading Srila Prabhupada's books, uh, devotees feel like there is no pure devotee around me. So how I can associate and get proper guidance? Is such a condition how we can motivate that devotee? Somebody is thinking there is no pure devotees to associate with <laughs> There are no pure devotees to associate. So, so I, you know how I can make advancement. Well, we have Prabhupada's books. Prabhupada said he lives forever by his books. So, get the books, Prabhupada's books, and read them with the devotees. We should think everyone's a pure devotee, more advanced than me. And then we, we should we should try to we should learn to appreciate other devotees. And see them as being pure devotees. Prabhupada was asked, are there any other pure devotees on the planet apart from you? Prabhupada said, how many members do we have in this society? So Prabhupada said, all the members of the society are pure devotees. Because they are all following four principles. And chanting every day Hare Krishna mantra. This is pure devotion. Of course, there are different levels of pure devotion. You know, we are made, but not on the level of Vyas and Radha Muni. We're not on the level of Prabhupada. But we're not doing anything sinful. So that's pure devotee. And we want to associate with devotee. And we associate with them by studying Prabhupada's books. Hearing from Prabhupada. We play Prabhupada's lectures. Do you listen to Prabhupada's lectures? Prabhupada also has Hindi lectures. Hindi, he speaks. We have in China we have Prabhupada's lectures translated to Chinese. In Russia, they translate all Prabhupada's lectures to. So they can hear from the pure devotee. And then you discuss with all the other pure devotees. So we should never think, oh, there's no pure devotees. No. There are so many devotees in our Krishna consciousness. Maharaj, I have a question. So, Maharaj, you have said that, uh, you, you have said something about China, that China is a restricted country for Krishna consciousness. So, uh, in China, how is our program like Bhakti Priksha program, book distribution program, and uh, uh, different festivals like uh, Jinmashtami festivals? How devotees are celebrating such festivals, and how devotees are associating, coming together, and organizing program? So, can you just tell, in, in, in a brief, how our programs are conducted? With great difficulty. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is done with great difficulty. What else to say? 
Oh, you're very lucky. She goes to college every day. So she, when she comes home, she feels she's not Christian conscious. She feels it's very hard to be a devotee. But she's studying, going to college every day. So she to college every day. So she's studying, going to college every day. So she's studying, going to college every day. So she's studying, going but devotees are also going out preaching every day. They go on the streets distributing books. There's so many non devotees there also. It's not easy. How to practice? We have to have good sadhana. You have to wake up early. You've got to do some chanting, you have to do some, a little RT. Just, just like we're doing here in the temple. You have to do the same at home. And that will give you the strength to go out every day. To go out and fight Maya and face. <laughs> uh, you'll be able to give, if, and if you have some Krishna consciousness yourself, you'll be able to share it with others. When you go to college, you take some prasada with you. And we have, we have, for example, we have one, there's one Russian devotee and he's living in Shanghai and he's studying there and he's began a club in the college. And they have kirtan. And he brings also some prasada. And he makes friends with people. You know, he doesn't speak philosophy much. Because it's China and people are very sensitive about it. But chanting is very nice, everybody likes it. And prasadam also people like. And gradually he's getting, meeting people, making friends. He's giving the holy name. That's the important thing. You should do the same. You make some Krishna yoga club at your college. And some, some colleges, the devotees come and they bring prasada. They have a... In America, in Gainesville, in Florida, every day, more than a thousand people come and take prasada. And everybody pays like five dollars or something. And they love the prasada. And that, that program has been going on for more than 30 years. So you should try to begin some programs like this. In Australia also, the, the devotees, and I think in Melbourne, where's Rasa Sadhana? 
Ratus Sagar is here? No, that's uh, Sagar. He's gone, yeah? yeah he gone. Okay, so he's from Melbourne, right? He's in Melbourne. But uh, I know in Melbourne, the devotees, they go there to the university once a week, and they have the prasadam, and many students, they will all come, and they take prasadam. People like vegetarian food. And of course, this vegan is very popular now, so we can also cook vegan. Vegan means no animal product. No milk, no cheese, no ghee, no butter. Yeah, the vegans say, they say people are not nice, they don't take care of the cows. <laughs> but so we can cook vegan. We can cook. We don't need to have cheese. We don't need to have butter. <laughs> Many ways to preach. You're not thinking enough, Maharaji. You need to think more about how to preach. Maharaji, 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 you have not heard what the Guru is saying. You have a question, you don't hear. You have to, you have to be more eager for preaching. You should want to preach. Krishna will show you many opportunities how you can preach. Krishna will give you the chance to give you the chance. You shouldn't be thinking, oh, I'm so unlucky, I'm in the college, I have no association. You're very lucky, you have an opportunity to preach there. You should use it, take the opportunity to give Krishna consciousness. Okay, Hare Krishna, Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Shiva Prabhupada Ki Jai, Lord Premanathya Ki Jai, Shabha Jiyamu Pai Prasada, Bhakti Gita Vinayasura Nishimha Sarvata Hara Ki Jai,